Ever wondered how the stock market works or how you can start trading? Well, you're in the right place. Let's dive into the intriguing world of stocks and trading. Picture the stock market as an enormous global marketplace. This is where shares or stocks of publicly traded companies are bought and sold. Now, what does owning a share mean? Quite simply, it's like having a tiny slice of that company. As a shareholder, you're part of the company's journey, sharing in its success, and yes, sometimes its challenges too. If the company does well, your shares may increase in value, and you might even receive dividends, which are a portion of the company's profits distributed to shareholders. So, in essence, the stock market provides a platform to trade ownership stakes in companies. Exciting, isn't it? Now that we know what the stock market is, it's time to understand some key concepts. First off, the stock exchange. Think of it as a marketplace, like a bustling farmer's market. But instead of buying and selling fruits and vegetables, we're trading stocks. Some well-known stock exchanges include the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. Next, let's talk about bull and bear markets. Picture a bull charging forward with unstoppable momentum. That's a bull market characterized by rising stock prices, on the other hand, a bear market, like a hibernating bear, sees falling prices. Lastly, let's touch on market and limit orders. A market order is like buying a concert ticket at face value, you pay the current market price. A limit order, however, is setting your own ticket price, specifying the price at which you're willing to buy or sell a stock. With these concepts, you're well on your way to understanding the ebb and flow of the stock market. Let's dive into the practical steps to start your trading journey. Picture yourself at the helm of your own financial ship. The first thing you'll need to do is open a brokerage account. Think of this as your gateway to the stock market, a platform through which you'll buy and sell shares. It's important to choose a reputable broker, one that offers a user-friendly interface, comprehensive research tools, and excellent customer service. Next, you'll need to determine your investment goals. Are you saving for retirement, a down payment on a house, or your child's education? Your goals will influence your investment strategy. Further, understand your risk tolerance. How much market volatility can you stomach? And your time horizon, the period you expect to hold an investment before taking it out. Remember, a well-defined plan is the first step towards profitable trading. Now the big question, how do you choose which stocks to buy? The answer lies in meticulous research and informed decision-making. Begin by exploring companies that pique your interest. Perhaps you're an avid tech enthusiast or a health-conscious consumer. Use these inclinations to guide your initial search. Once you've identified potential companies, delve into their financial stability. Look for steady earnings, robust cash flow, and manageable debt levels. These indicators can provide a snapshot of a company's financial health. Next, consider the company's growth potential. Does the company have a unique product or service? Are they a leader in their field? Do they have plans for expansion? Answers to these questions can help you gauge the company's future prospects. Lastly, keep an eye on industry trends. Emerging sectors like renewable energy or artificial intelligence might offer promising investment opportunities. Choosing the right stocks is an art and science combined, so take your time and do your homework. You've got your stocks picked out. What's next? Let's talk about strategies and managing risk. There are several investment strategies to consider. Long-term investing involves buying and holding stocks for years, aiming for capital appreciation. Day trading, on the other hand, involves buying and selling stocks within the same trading day to profit from short-term price fluctuations. Swing trading is another strategy where you hold stocks for several days or weeks to capitalize on price swings. But no matter your strategy, managing risk is crucial. Diversifying your portfolio is a great way to spread risk. It's like the old saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And then there's the use of stop loss orders. These can limit potential losses by selling a stock when it reaches a certain price. Remember, diversification and risk management are your best friends in this journey. One last thing before we wrap up. The stock market is ever changing, and so should your knowledge. Let's take a moment to appreciate the inherent dynamism of the stock market. Like the ebb and flow of tides, the stock market is in a constant state of flux. Prices rise and fall, trends come and go, and the economic landscape can shift in the blink of an eye. To keep up with these ever-changing conditions, it's essential that you, as a trader or investor, commit to continuous learning. Now what does continuous learning mean in the context of stock market trading and investing? 
It's not just about reading a book or two on finance and calling it a day. No, continuous learning is a lifelong commitment. It's about constantly expanding your knowledge, honing your skills, and staying updated on the latest market trends and financial news. Why is this so important? Because the more informed you are, the better equipped you'll be to make smart investment decisions. Information is power, and in the stock market it can be the difference between making a profit and suffering a loss. So how can you stay informed? One way is by keeping up with financial news. This could be through newspapers, online articles, podcasts, or financial news networks. The world of finance is interconnected, and events from around the globe can impact the stock market. By staying updated on financial news, you'll be better able to anticipate market shifts and adjust your strategies accordingly. But it's not just about staying updated on the news. Continuous learning also involves deepening your understanding of finance and the stock market. This can be achieved through books, online courses, seminars, webinars, and even academic degrees in finance or economics. These resources can provide you with a solid foundation of knowledge, as well as introduce you to advanced concepts and strategies. Remember, continuous learning is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's not about cramming as much information as possible in a short amount of time. Rather, it's about steadily expanding your knowledge over time. Even the most experienced investors never stop learning. They understand that the stock market is complex and ever-changing, and they remain humble in their pursuit of knowledge. Now, while books and courses are valuable resources, nothing beats real-world experience. That's where learning from experienced investors comes in. They've been in your shoes, they've made mistakes, and they've learned from them. By following their journey, you can gain insights into their thought processes and decision-making strategies. How can you learn from experienced investors? One way is by following them on social media. Many successful investors share their insights and advice online. You can also attend seminars or webinars where they speak, or read books or articles they've written. Another way is through mentorship. A mentor can provide you with personalized advice, feedback, and guidance. They can help you navigate the complexities of the stock market, avoid common pitfalls, and develop successful trading strategies. But remember, while it's beneficial to learn from others, ultimately, you must forge your own path. Each investor is unique with their own goals, risk tolerance, and investment style. Learn from others, but also take the time to understand yourself. Develop your own strategies, make your own decisions, and learn from your own experiences. To conclude, continuous learning is a crucial aspect of stock market trading and investing. It involves staying updated with financial news, deepening your understanding of finance and the stock market, and learning from experienced investors. It's a lifelong commitment, but one that can greatly enhance your trading skills and investment success. So keep learning, keep growing, and keep investing. Stay curious, stay humble, and never stop seeking knowledge. The stock market may be ever-changing, but so are you. And with continuous learning, you can navigate these changes with confidence and skill. Remember, the best investor is a well-informed one. Well, that's a wrap on our quick guide to the stock market. We've covered a lot of ground today and I hope that you're feeling more confident and ready to dive in. Let's take a moment to go over some of the key points we've discussed to make sure you're fully equipped to start your stock market journey. We began with an introduction to the stock market, a place where you can buy and sell shares of publicly traded companies. Remember, when you're buying a stock, you're buying a piece of that company. You become an owner and as the company grows and prospers, so does your investment. That's the fundamental principle behind stock market investing. We then moved on to some key stock market concepts. We talked about stock exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, where stocks are bought and sold. We also discussed the difference between bull markets and bear markets. Remember, a bull market is characterized by rising stock prices, while a bear market sees falling prices. Understanding these trends can help you navigate the market more effectively. We also talked about market orders and limit orders. Market orders buy or sell at the current market price, while limit orders set a specific price for execution. Both have their uses, and understanding when to use each can give you more control over your trading. Next, we discussed getting started as a trader or investor. The first step is to open a brokerage account with a reputable broker. This is your gateway to the stock market. Once you have an account, you can start buying and selling stocks. 
But before you dive in, it's important to decide on your investment goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon. These factors will guide your investment decisions and help you build a suitable portfolio. Choosing the right stocks is a crucial part of the investment process. We stress the importance of researching companies you're interested in and looking at factors like financial stability, growth potential, and industry trends. Remember, the more you know about a company, the better equipped you'll be to make informed investment decisions. We also touched on different investment strategies, including long-term investing, day trading and swing trading. Each has its pros and cons, and the right one for you depends on your investment goals, risk tolerance and time horizon. Managing risk is another important aspect of investing. We talked about diversification or spreading your investments across a variety of different stocks to reduce risk. We also discussed the use of stop loss orders, which can help limit potential losses. Lastly, we stressed the importance of continuous learning. The stock market is dynamic and staying updated with financial news and market trends is crucial. We also recommended continuing your education through books, courses, and by following experienced investors. Remember, the more you learn, the more confident and successful you'll be as an investor. Now, it's time for you to make your move. Start your stock market journey today, and remember, every great investor started somewhere. Good luck.